Okay, so do you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had a moment of depression, okay? And, and this is backstory I'm giving you here. It will lead something to the discussion of an article and, and something particular. Um, but let me give you the backstory. I had a moment of, you could say, depression at the point when I was releasing a video. And that video was the video on the 30th of August, Donald Trump, the Google memo and more scum thoughts, such that I was motivated to add another paragraph to the footnotes. And this was what I wrote in that paragraph. I wrote, overall, I have to say this was one of the most depressing months of events and responses to events I have seen over the last decade. That may sound a bit over the top on its face, but it really does seem like society is heading down the path of wishful thinking. This is how we would like reality to be, therefore this is how we will assume it must be, with a degree of media complicity that makes me wonder if there is any way back. Now, what motivated me to write that, particularly with regard to that video, and write it on that video, was largely some of the responses I'd seen to the James Damore, Damore, whatever he's called, Google memo uh, business. And I can't say that this was the first time I've ever seen this kind of response, because I've seen it before from those that are the climate change denialists, to use the wonderful coloured um, prejudging term or people that deny the theory of evolution the modern evolutionary synthesis in those contexts if we look at, at people that deny the modern evolutionary synthesis generally it is people who are creationists right they believe in god god created us all as is and effectively it boils down to a case i would suggest of wishful thinking of saying Science be bollocks, right? Science be damned, really. Yes, we'll discuss the science, but only when it agrees with us. Effectively, this is how we would like the world to be. Therefore, this is how we expect the world to be portrayed, whether or not the world is actually like that. And so I've seen examples of that. And maybe not everybody who's critical of the modern evolutionary synthesis or climate change and there being a, a man-made element to it adopts that position, but I note a heavy element, a heavy trend in those particular arguments. And so it is with some of these more left-wing responses on issues of gender and biological sex and the possibility that there may be... St the people seem to be able to accept that there are individual differences that were not born out or were not all born as clones of one another. But the idea that some of these differences, that different groups may have different statistical mixes of these characteristics is just too much to bear. Even if the science points towards it, let's just turn our face to that particular science. And it was maybe with the James Damore Google memo case with regard to that that it, I was so depressed. Sure, there were people who had objections to it who said, I think that he's got the science wrong. And that's why what he's written is a load of bollocks. Now... I, I tended more to side with what he'd wrote than I did with those. I think that largely a lot of what he said was true, even if he over-egged some of it. But I can accept that position, right? I, I, I have some... Um, you know, I have some respect for that position. If you're saying I think his memo is wrong because the science is wrong, I can at least get along with that. But there were a lot of responses that were more along the lines of, well, it's, they don't really care whether the science was right or wrong in what he said. He shouldn't be saying it anyway. Why? Because the world that he was portraying in what he said is not how they would like the world to be. Ergo, that's not how we should pretend the world is. And that was what really depressed me. And what depressed me on top of that was that rather than with climate change and with evolutionary biology, where the press is very quick to, 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 to sort of take the science perspective on those and to, to mock those sort of anti-scientific perspectives, seemingly with regard to this, the press is more than happy just to forget about the science. It doesn't largely care about the science it's taking the ultra progressive position and science be damned or at least that seems to be how it comes across to me it's not arguing the science it doesn't care about that it's arguing about what we should be saying regardless of the science so i'd made that paragraph i published the video 
And that pings, when I publish a video, it pings it onto Twitter. So I opened up Twitter, <laughs> and I, I, it couldn't have been timed any further, any better, because as I'm scrolling through my tweets just to check that it's tweeted it out, there's a tweet from the great Gary Edwards. Love Gary Edwards. Subscribe to him if you're not subscribed to him. Who I think is probably exasperated on a lot of these issues in exactly the same way I am for exactly the same reasons. And he had tweeted this particular article here. Which just summed up every fucking thing, really. Osborne apologises for puberty book that says... Breasts exist to make girls look grown up and attractive. This was the paragraph. Girls have breasts for two reasons. One is to make milk for babies. The other is to make a girl look grown up and attractive. Virtually all breasts, no matter what size or shape they end up when a girl finishes puberty, can do both things. Now, I'm not going to comment on the specific way that paragraph is phrased because to be quite honest I'm no expert in how you phrase uh, pages for books for 14 year old boys going through puberty okay so I don't know whether that's the best way to phrase it or not but some of the responses to this I thought were just really 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 depressing what had kicked all of this off is that a blogger had gotten hold of this and that had kicked off the outrage train on social media let me read you uh, another piece from that guardian article it is the section on breasts that is drawn criticism after writer and blogger simon ragoon and what a ridiculous fucking name who blogs about father it doesn't say what a ridiculous name i added that bit by the way if you if if you're uh, just listening to this and not looking at the screen who blogs about fatherhood at man versus pink uh which sounds like some kind of fucking porn movie posted a page from the book on facebook uh, then goes on to to just read out the passage that i've already written uh, that i've already read to you sorry uh, from the book this just seemed awful and completely unjustifiable. Aragoon and, 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 and told the Guardian, Usborne are serial offenders in peddling gender stereotypes to kids. So no mention of science of this being scientifically wrong. It's a gender stereotype to suggest that breasts may have some other function beyond simply spewing out milk for babies then becomes a gender stereotype. I just hope that nowhere in Osborne's book did it suggest that perhaps humans had evolved legs for the purpose of perambulating from A to B, uh, because I would hate to think that legs had been stereotyped in the way that breasts had been here, because there you go, suggesting that something has a function, unless it's the function that you would like to be suggested, if you have any issues with that function, science be fucked, right, to suggest it is to stereotype it, you know, how unfair on people that want to sit on their ass 24 hours a day, and just use their legs to wave in the air, uh, rather than to actually walk on them, how stereotyping to suggest that legs may have evolved to get you from A to B. Let me read you a couple of other things uh, that were said in that article. Claire Nichols, a teacher from Bristol, she had some positive message that teaching young boys that breasts are for feeding babies and even acknowledging that not all women can is fantastic as far as she's concerned. But, the big but... Nichols said that describing the other purpose of breasts to make the girl look grown up and attractive was extremely problematic. Not that it was wrong, not that it's not true, but it's just problematic to say it. Because it reinforces the sexualization of breasts which makes girls and women self-conscious. So, if breasts are a second sexual, secondary sexual characteristic, right presumably we shouldn't mention it, we should just pretend that isn't true. Again, let's go with a wishful thinking view of, 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 of the world rather than how the world actually is because it might make some people feel awkward or uncomfy or make their lives a little bit more difficult if we describe the world as it actually is. So we need to play in this little rose-tinted spectacle world. Let books be books, <laughs> which is a bit fucking ironic 
given that they're not letting books be books, which continues to campaign against sexism in children's books, was also critical. It's disturbing to see this kind of sexism. It's sexist to suggest that a breast may have any other role other than to provide milk and to lactate for little babies. Uh, in a book aimed at pubescent boys, it suggests that girls' bodies are for boys to look at, which is not the kind of message we'd expect publishers of children's books to want to send out. Maybe that is what it's suggesting, or maybe it's just going with the, the consensus, the general view of the science. And what is the general view of the science? The general view of the science is that human breasts are a fucking oddity. They clearly have a a purpose or a uh, there's been an evolutionary pressure above and beyond simply that of producing milk for human babies why do we know this because not just amongst great apes but amongst all primates human breasts human females are the only ones that have permanent breasts that have breasts that are packed with adipose tissue fatty tissue so the breasts are very very prominent at all times right at all times even when uh, the individual is not pregnant even when the individual is not breastfeeding i know i'm gonna have to do it i apologize for this but i'm gonna have to show you a few monkey tits i apologize for that okay chimp tits gorilla tits uh, monkey tits, primate tits, great ape tits, and of course, let's compare that, I'm going to have to show you them, might get the video banned, but I've got to do it, maybe I'll just put a little mosaic over the, over the nipples, I can't do it over the whole breast, can I, otherwise it won't make the point, it'll be, it'll be blurring out the very bit that we need to see, you don't see this anywhere else in the animal kingdom other than human beings, only human beings do you see this. So, one of two things must be true, right? Putting the wishful thinking to one side, putting all the fucking fairy tales and how we would like the world to be to one side, one of two things must be true. Given that only human females have these prominent breasts, and actually human females are the only ones, they are the only great ape, that, that lay down fat in the way that they do. If you look at a female chimpanzee or a female gorilla, they put body fat on in the way that human males do. They put it on round their middle. It's only human females that put it on on the buttocks and on the breast. So either there's been a genetic mutation that human females have managed to take advantage of that no other primate has managed to take advantage of, that no other great ape has managed to take advantage of, that human males haven't managed to take advantage of, and they have managed to evolve a better breast and a better buttock, right? That are just better for sitting on and, and better for breastfeeding, okay? Or there is some kind of sexual selection going on here as we've become less hairy and the breasts and the buttocks have become more revealed, uh, perhaps. Because the problem with the idea that they've evolved a more a better one for their primary function is that in actual fact, and ask a midwife, right? If you think I'm full of shit, ask a fucking midwife on this. They will tell you, every one of them will tell you, that actually women with larger breasts have more trouble breastfeeding than women with smaller breasts. Large breasts, small breasts, they produce the same amount of milk. A large breast is no better at producing milk than a small breast. And it's actually harder for the baby to latch on if you've got large breasts than if you've got small breasts. The ideal is small breasts, big nips, right? Like chapel fucking hat pegs, right? That is the ideal breast for breastfeeding. Not the large breasts with the, with the less prominent nipples. That's not very good for breastfeeding. So what's going on here? Why have human females evolved to have breasts that are less good at breast? feeding it suggests that something's going on in the sexual selection sense and it's not just females where this is the case i'm gonna really be mega fucking sexist against men now and show you a graphic here take that i've purloined from a blog which shows you that not only are human females outliers when it comes to breast size but human males are outliers when it becomes 
uh, due to penis size, that we have evolved a larger penis relative to our size than every other great ape out there. Seemingly, I must have fucking missed out on that particular mutation, but in general, right, that is what has happened with regard to... Uh, to human males, we've got disproportionately large penises. I would suggest it's because we're less hairy and so these parts of the body are a little bit more revealed. So they are open for sexual selection uh, because they're that much more visible in the way that they're not amongst other great apes. That is where we're kind of at and that is the best fit for what we see. But apparently we can't mention that because it doesn't fit in with this wishful thinking. This is, we don't want the world to be like that. We don't want breasts to have some kind of secondary sexual function in terms of sexual attractiveness. Therefore, we cannot mention it, even if the science points in that direction. Let me read you out another comment that was left here just to wrap up. Fen Coles, co-director at Letter Bollocks Library, and it, technically it's actually Letterbox Library, but given the quotation, I think Letter Bollocks Library fits that a little bit better. A children's bookseller specialising in inclusive and diverse books for schools and parents also found the page problematic. God, problematic. It's such a totally cuntish, weasel word, isn't it? Because you don't have to be wrong to be problematic. You can be absolutely right and it's still problematic. So it's a great way of dismissing something and saying you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't be able to say that. You should apologise for saying that without even having to demonstrate that the person who said it is wrong. The language used by... Bearing in mind this is a book for boys, strongly suggests that girls' breasts exist for boys, for their admi admiration, for their gaze. She said, well actually yes, it probably is suggesting that. That the reason that girls, women, have permanent breasts, rather than the just transient, temporary breasts that every other fucking primate species has, probably is to attract the gaze of the male of the species, to give that individual hopefully an advantage in attracting mates in just the same way as the prominent penises that males of our species have. Yes, that probably is why they are like that. But you shouldn't be doing that, according to Fen Coles, even if it's true. If we want to encourage our children, she goes on, to have healthy relationships with each other. And if we want to build a culture of consent, suggesting body parts exist solely for their use by another person. No! No! It's not suggesting it's for use by another person, you stupid fucking idiot! It's for the use by the individual. If your body part is attracting members of the opposite sex, right, you're utilising that to draw. It's like fucking pheromones. If your fucking rancid sweat is actually producing, including some pheromones that attracts the opposite sex, that isn't the opposite sex using you. That's you using that to attract the opposite sex. Jesus, you couldn't be further wrong. Fen Coles, Jesus, seemingly outside of the control of the person the body part belongs to, etc., etc., is at the best disempowering and at the worst very dangerous. This ill-thought-out, regressive and irresponsible language being used in what is intended as an educational book, we're very surprised this wasn't picked up by an editor. Or it could just be that you had an editor who, unlike you, doesn't absolutely fucking hate and despise science when it doesn't give exactly the fucking socio-political message that you would like it to give. This is the world of Fen Coles. The world of Fen Coles is the world where I can stand here and say to you, that the male peacock has this extraordinary tail as, a, as, a, as part of the business of sexual selection. It is to attract females, right? It's not, it's not because females are, are using the male peacock and using his body part. He is using his body part, his elaborate ornate display to attract females and females are drawn to that. Why? 
We believe the evolutionary argument is that it is a sign of his fitness, that to be able to carry around such a ridiculous fucking display of plumage is a bit of an encumbrance. So genetically, he must be a strong and healthy and fit male peacock to be able to still survive, still find food, still be fit and healthy whilst carrying, being encumbered by this giant fucking tail. So I can suggest that his tail is about sexual selection, and that's fine, right? But if a peacock was to write a book for little, little girl peacocks, explaining why little boy peacocks develop these magnificent displays of plumage, they'd have to pretend that the tail served some other purpose. They wouldn't be able to say, these tails are there to attract female, to attract peahens, because if they did that, do you know what that would be? Well, according to Fen Coles, that would be regressive. That would be regressive and irresponsible language. And that is what is depressing me here. It's not that people are arguing. This is just the same as some of the arguments against the Google memo. It's not that people... If only, if only Fen Coles had said... This book by Osborne bo books is bollocks because the science is wrong. As far as I am concerned, the fact that human females have prominent breasts and no other primate have pr has prominent breasts is fuck all to do with sexual selection. And here's why. I'd respect that. Even if it's wrong, even if the reasoning was wrong, even if the reasoning sounded trash, I'd respect it because at least they were making a scientific counterclaim to the scientific claim was being made. Instead, the likes of Simon Regan, a man, a man, a man, a man, a man, and Van Coles is very much along the line of science be damned. We're in a kind of post-science take now where... Everything has to be written in the way we would like society to be. And if society suggests that reality may not entirely comport with the way that we would like society to be in our ultra-progressive mindset, what we have to do is ignore the science for the good of society. That's what depresses me.